Hello, listeners. This is Art Talk, episode 52. And today I have my art friend, um, Ramona Pintea, as my guest. Ramona is an artist who I met in 2020 when we both were in an art marketing course. And soon Ramona left and took off her own, on her own, and conquered the world with her urban queen. <laughs> and she has a very interesting background as fashion designer, interior designer, and is now well known as the artist who empowers women with her paintings. She has been featured in multiple media and her art collection is all over the world in private collections, galleries, etc. Welcome, Ramona. I'm so happy that you're here and that you want to share your beautiful story with us. No, oh, thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for inviting me. <laughs> I'm very happy that you said yes. <laughs> so you have a very interesting background because you live in Romania and coming yes. from a country that was haunted by um, communism. Can you tell us a bit what that means? And especially when you can't create the art you desire to create. Well, um, I remember as a child, the lack of color. I vividly remember the fact that everything was gray and I don't know why I had this need for color, but I remember, you know, the buildings were gray, TV was black and white, all the books were black and white. There was no, um, there was no color, there was no advertising because everything was state-owned and you had one, one shop for everything and there was no food, so you had no need of advertising and everything was black and white and gray, as I said. And when I was at around... I don't know, 12 or 14, around that age, I saw a book uh, on Michelangelo. And I remember looking through that art book and I was so impressed. And I saw, mm. you know, all the beautiful paintings and the Capella Sistina. And that left, that created one of those moments that you see in movies. You know, I had that moment when I said, oh God, if I can escape this place, I will go somewhere where there's color and there's beauty. And, and that really inspired me. And um of course, I did left after communism fell just a few years later. And actually, on my 30th birthday, I was standing in the Vatican in Capella Sistina, uh, watching the beautiful work of Michelangelo and admiring it. So, you know, um, those moments that they pinpoint in movies, I think they do happen in reality, too. <laughs> yeah, I, I truly believe that. Um, Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci... Mm. specifically one of mine i have more people i talked with who have this who yeah. who saw their work and had like oh my god yes this it is what i god. need to do <laughs> yeah i i didn't think that's what i was gonna do at the time i didn't want to become an artist i just wanted to be surrounded by beauty i guess beauty. i guess that was the longing that i had at, at that particular time yeah. Um, and the emotion that created in me was very, very strong. So, you know, I'm happy that I get to be an artist and and create emotion <laughs> within my through my paintings somehow. <laughs> well, you absolutely do. And um, uh, because you went to London art school and yeah. then you went into fashion design. So you created a lot of beauty because fashion is beauty and emotion, right? Yeah, yeah. And how did this help you later when you took on art as a way of living? Well, um, I went to London and that's where I discovered painting. And I fell in love with painting. I was I, I loved it so much. And I did a, I did an A-level course in fine art. And, and uh, all my teachers told me to go to uni to do fine art. But I came from a communist country with this mentality of the starving artist. And I went to London by myself. So I needed to support myself. And um, I thought, you know, I didn't want, I didn't come from a starving upbringing to go into a starving artist uh, <laughs> uh, career. So I went to do fashion design thinking, at least I can get a job, you know, as a dresser 
dressmaker as a pattern cutter or something. So, um, but then, but then when I was about 25, I opened my own fashion business. So I went into fashion. I worked for, for various fashion uh, designers and companies, and then I opened my own business. And um, I had a really wonderful, wonderful time as a, as a fashion designer, you know, growing my own label and selling to boutiques across the country. And I think that helped me tremendously later on because I understood what it means to run a business. Yeah. And when you're an artist, you're actually running your business. You know, yeah. it's not just about the, making a product, which was the same in fashion. We were making the product, but we had to still market it and sell it and bring it to an audience and, you know, do the whole thing. So yeah. uh, that was great experience that has helped me and is still helping me now in in the business of, of art, <laughs> in the art business. Yeah, and that is... That is so important, right? Because, I mean, you talk about the starving artist, mm. but um, I was taught the same way. And I don't come from a community like you. My background is different, very different. That's why I asked you, because that's very difficult to understand when you haven't lived it. But star the starving artist uh, story was running the same with us. And um, yeah, and the, the thing is, you are an entrepreneur. You can see that in everything you do. And I learn a lot of that. I went through your website and had like, ah, oh, wait a minute. Oh, okay. she does it. Hey, this is a good way. <laughs> yeah. Because that is the thing we lack, right? As artists, okay. we have like, okay, just lock me up in my studio mm -hmm. and I will paint forever. Well, now it, yeah, now it's all, you, you also the balance, that. right? There are two very important parts. One is creating art, and then the other one is sharing the, the art with the world. And mm -hmm. they take just as much effort, just as much time, just as much energy to do both. But you yeah. have to do both because, yeah. you know, yes, you can paint just for yourself to have your art um for you but if you want to paint for the world and to send a message out then you have to do more than just rely on being discovered <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 that is great um so fashion and painting are not the only endeavors because from that you became also an interior designer, winning a five-star the European Property Awards in London. What attracted you to interior design, fashion, painting, interior design? <laughs> I can see a link there, especially as an entrepreneur, but what attracts you in, in, in uh, interior design? Well, um, I think I just let myself be carried, you know, uh, through the journey, I had, after almost 20 years of living in London, I decided to return to Romania. And as I came back to Romania, I didn't really know what to do. And I thought more of being, a, you know, creating a business because that's what I had been doing all my adult life in London. So I made a list of a few businesses that I can make. You know, I wrote down 20 businesses I could start. <laughs> and I remember I actually saw that that journal uh, a while ago. And on number five was have an interior design business. And I think that attracted me the most because it's a creative business. Yeah. And uh, I started from zero. I mean, when I came back to Romania, I didn't even know where to buy a light bulb from because the country has changed so much in 20 years. It was unrecognizable. It wasn't the, the great communist country that I had left 20 years before. Um, but, you know, I adapted and I loved it and I started from nothing and uh, it was a great business. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I had employees and I had, uh, you know, some really interesting, really fun projects that I did. So it was fun. Great. It sounds really... <laughs> Yeah, it sounds really that you took off a path that learned you how to, to, to be creative and learned you how to be an entrepreneur, to shift into art and to, because you have the knowledge and you know what to do and how to work it. And that is amazing. Also in your marketing, 
And did interior in design and having a boutique also help you with your paintings itself? Placing them in um, interiors and... No, 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 because I, I didn't actually place my art into interior design uh, places at all. What happened was, um, as I was uh, doing the interior design business, I uh, started painting again. So it was only when I came back to Romania, I, I got back into painting, into art. And I was doing that the weekends and I was doing that uh, at night time, you know, until two o'clock in the morning, I'd be painting uh, in my spare bedroom as you do. And I loved it. It was so soul fulfilling and it was it, it was just fun. Like I'd run a business during the day. I'd have a, a, a four or five year old girl, a daughter and, and paint all weekends and all, all night. Uh, but I loved it. And what happened was we went on holiday to the States. And every time I go on holiday, obviously, I'll go and visit a lot of art galleries and museums. And this particular art gallery uh, that we were visiting had an open call for artists. And I submitted, um, I left the gallery, I took the information, I, I submitted, and then uh, they accepted me to... Um, to present my art uh, during the Art Basel week uh, in Miami in December 2013, I think it was. So we, I went back to, to Miami and exhibited. And I think that's when I went, you know what, this is what I wanted all my life. Like this mm -hmm. was, if you had a magic wand and you could do whatever you want to do, what do you want to do? I wanted to be an artist. So I thought, okay, uh, it's the time to do it. So I don't think it, it, I came back to, to Bucharest and I think within six months, I actually closed the business in order to be a full-time artist. I thought I'm not going to do half, half. I've been doing half, half, just painting for myself, but I'm going to really dive in and burn my ships and go full, full on. Um, so yeah. That's courageous. Oh, years yeah. ago. <laughs> yeah. That's so courageous. Yeah. And um, before you started, by the way, with um, the Urban Queen, you painted um, these very large, because I've seen them, these beautiful magic paintings with animals and nature and portraits expressing kind of a symbiosis. And I have a quote from your website that really spoke to me. I'm unreservedly and unapologetically an optimist. I know that. I see that in your art too. <laughs> Eternally in love with life, humankind and our riveting journey through life. Equally, I'm in deep awe of the faithful admirer of nature's perennial magnificence. My art is thus a labor of love endeavoring to bring viewers moments of true joy and reverence. The theme, tones and brushstrokes through my body of work pursue the joie de vivre, the uplifting and the beautiful. So what made you step in into a more expressive and rich color urban queens, which by the way shows joie de vivre? You completely <laughs> changed the whole theme. What was that? Um... I think as any artist, we paint what we live, don't we? We we go through our emotions and somehow we put that on canvas. So uh, getting to Urban Queen was a, was a process that took a few years. I think I started around 2015, 2016 with uh, um, a series called Quest. And that's the one that has all those nudes and and angel wings and you know all these bodies that are somehow in space looking at space and this was the time when i was going through my own searches and mm -hmm. and because it had been a few years since i started being a, a a professional artist and it took longer than i thought it would to really you know make something happen out of it so i was having my own questions is this my path is this my purpose am i supposed to carry on with this thing 
And th th these paintings speak, speak of that moment when we ask ourselves, what is our true mission? What is our path? Do we have a purpose? Is there even such thing as God and universe? And so, uh, and obviously the nudes, because that's the moment that, you know, you're most vulnerable at. Um, and as I was asking these questions and this, um, uh, wings appeared on my nudes, which were almost like an answer to my questions that, you know, the the divinity is within you, whatever mm -hmm. you need is within you, those things that you're looking outside for, you can find them in, inside yourself. And then that progressed into me doing some shamanic meditations and meeting my, uh, my lioness as my as my uh, spirit animal and then I and then I thought oh if I'm if we're gonna start looking inside then let's look inside so then I did a whole series which is called she knows mm -hmm. okay which is based on let's look inside and and what is it that we find inside and these animals are almost like a, a metaphor of of what we can find inside ourselves yeah. you know and then I started looking at these animals um, how are they depicted throughout history uh, and in different cultures and what is their meaning and I used a lot of big cats like uh, the lions and the tigers and the panthers uh, but then I also used birds and uh, you know hummingbird I love the hummingbird she appears in many of my paintings because she is supposed to bring to be the bringer of joy <laughs> yeah. yeah and um so that's that series where she knows she's now found the answers. She knows herself. If you if we look inside, we find ourselves. And these paintings are very powerful. I must say, yeah. you know, people really connected with them. Women really connected with them. And um, it, it's always such a it's such a joy to have messages from people who come back and say, oh, my God, I connected in such and such a way. And that painting made such a difference to me. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've had um, a teacher from a university in the States coming back and saying she uses a particular painting when she teaches a group of young adolescent girls about self-worth and about uh you know so and and they actually the university ordered um a print of that painting which is you know it's like yes this is my purpose well that's yeah. why i'm here yeah. exactly <laughs> it's, really, yeah. it's yeah. really beautiful um and then uh so so as i said it's a progression until i actually mm -hmm. got to urban queen so urban queen happened in uh 2020 when we hit the pandemic and I had just returned from London. I had a show um, uh, just outside London and I came back and within two days it was locked down and I couldn't go to my studio. I didn't know what to do. And I thought, I'm just not going to do much, stay at home. And I read an article in Forbes magazine that talked about women leaders and mm -hmm. how they were dealing with the um, uh, pandemic versus men leaders. So that started uh, another question in my head, and that was how are we as leaders in society nowadays and what's our role in society and how can we contribute to bring more balance to society? We all know when we talk about the patriarchal uh, society and um, you know the, the feminist movement that came before us came with a very masculine approach. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the feminist movement that is happening right now, it's understanding that um, we need to bring to the table our own feminine um, gifts. And this is yeah. what the world is missing. It's yeah. missing women with feminine gifts in order to have yeah. the balance that we're seeking. Yeah. Yeah. And the fact that our gifts, you know, when I was growing up, uh, I was brought up that these things are not important or their weaknesses rather than than gifts and strengths uh you know things like art and music or yeah, things like yeah. sensibility and nurturing or compassion uh you know and it was all about go 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 get 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 <laughs> so this is how the urban queen was created with the idea of of 
where are we as leaders and bringing femininity into leadership, not femininity, feminine qualities, shall I say, yeah. into yeah. leadership. Yeah. Um, so that's why, you know, the, the portraits are, are feminine portraits, but in a leadership uh, position. And also mm -hmm. the crown, because to me, uh, a queen represents somebody who is a leader, is but a leader. also somebody who serves her people. Yeah. And I think uh, women are more inclined to look at the community when they are leaders yeah. and to be more, um, you know, taking care of the community, not only of the prophets. <laughs> Yeah, it's so, such a beautiful, powerful story, and I can relate to it so much with my own art. Yeah. And, um, of course, I come from a different perspective, but also women empowerment, and I totally, totally uh, are behind you when it comes to the first wave of feminism was so masculine. Um, and that's not what we need. We need that feminine input. Mm. But it had to uh, be that. I mean, you can all you can absolutely understand it why it was like that. Of uh, course, of that, course, which, and it yeah. was needed. Was very powerful too. Yeah. Very yeah. powerful. So. Yeah. So um, then, and you said that. What's my purpose and everything? And I see this with the many artists that spirituality that you have, and and I know you do a lot of things about self growth and. It is at the forefront of what we do. Can you tell us how this helps you with your art and especially the portraits you paint? Well, it, it helps me tremendously because so I started, you know, the self-development journey, if you like, in 2001 mm -hmm. when I attend. Well, I think before then I started reading some of the Louise Hayes books and yeah. uh, you know, um, saying all the mantras or affirmations, whatever they were called at the yep. time. But in 2001, I went to the first Tony Robbins seminar okay. and uh, that completely changed my life. And then in 2001, September, during the 9-11, uh, I was in the room with Tony Robbins to one of his seminars in Hawaii. And that was very, very powerful. Uh, but then I continued the journey and, um, you know, you don't stop with Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins is always just the beginning. I did the whole Mastery University course. And then, you know, I did, oh, I don't even remember from NLP to um, anything you can think of. I went around the world to see people like Jim Rohn or Wayne Dyer or uh, Deepak Chopra or <laughs> uh, yeah. a variety of people and then I obviously moved into um, more spiritual things like theta healing and um, a vortex energy and angel therapy and all these things I actually I did everything for myself uh, I never wanted to be a coach or or you know coach anybody it wasn't something that I wanted to do but for me growth and growing and learning it's a big part of who I am so I really mm -hmm. needed to go and do a lot of uh, inner search and I think I mean I don't think I am absolutely sure that this is what helps me be in a place in my life where I am happy I know how to uh, look at the things that make me happy and uh, ignore or put aside the worries and the concerns and just, you know, deal with a problem rather than worry about the problem and um, create uh, some sort of a joyful life for myself because, you know, at the end of the day, that's why we're on earth. Mm -hmm. And when I create art, I create art from that point of view. You know, I want somebody to have my art in their home and to feel happy about it and passionate yeah. and joy. I want to bring happiness into people's lives. I think there's yeah. enough misery out yeah. there, you know, turn on <laughs> the news yeah. and you can see misery. Look at my art and feel happy. So exactly. I jump on the trampoline before I paint. I put my music on loud. I dance. I create it with this energy, which I hope that it kind of goes through <laughs> into the painting. It does. The colors it does. that I use yeah. are very bright and cheerful and colorful and happy colors. 
So uh, I would say 100% my whole journey as self-development is coming through and it's helping me in my art, absolutely. Yeah, and I think that's for many artists. Most of the people I spoke with have this journey. I had the same like you. I started early, beginning of the 90s with Louise Hay. You can hear mm -hmm. my life. Yes. <laughs> and later I took it on again. Um, uh, Abraham Hicks, um, yes. Deepak Chopra, um, uh, Neville Gordon, uh, mm. a lot of these people. Yeah, I'm not, I haven't. I have seen really something from Tony Robbins, but and yeah, I'm not a coach either. But it is so important to feel that wholeness within yourself and that energy that you can generate to create that what you have on your inner on the inside to put that on the outside and yeah i also have that when i paint people who smile oh god have that smile in your house you know when you wake up and you think oh another day you look at the painting you think that's oh yeah i need to smile or if she could do it then i can too something like that you know it's empowering it is bringing yeah. happiness and joy and and beauty and yeah. we all want to be surrounded by beauty, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, when I was painting these uh, these urban queens during the pandemic, um, I started sharing them uh, on Facebook and Instagram. And that was probably one of the... Because before I used to... I worked with galleries in London and I didn't really have a connection with, uh, with a collector. Mm -hmm. um, and... When I started doing it online and people bought the paintings and came back to tell me how it makes them feel and how it changes their lives. And I think that was a tremendous discovery for me. It was so mm -hmm. beautiful to actually be in touch with a, with, with a collector, yeah. uh, you know, and yeah. especially it was during the pandemic and I had all these women saying, oh my God, you know, I have, I have, I, I remember Kristen from um, San Francisco. She, she's a nurse and she was working in front lines. You know, we were all in lockdown and she was in hospital and um, she was texting me in her breaks. She was saying, oh, I'm in the car now. I don't have time to go home because my shift starts in, I don't know how many hours, but I just look at your art and it gives me, you know, so much strength and courage to carry on. And I have two daughters and I'm thinking what's going to happen to the world. And I hope that, you know, we're going to make it. And, and she ordered three paintings, one for each of her daughters and one for herself. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, things like that, it's it's what what makes you think, OK, it's all worth it. You know, spending all yeah. the time alone in the studio, <laughs> it makes it all Definitely worth it. Is. Definitely is. But it is also nice to connect between artists. I mean, we had a chat lately and I really loved that because it is lonely and it yes. is good to share some insights or feelings about that. Just absolutely. Yeah. Well, for me, it was difficult to, to stay in the studio by myself when I gave up my business and I decided to be an artist. It was it was a bit of hell because I'm a bit of an extrovert and I mm -hmm. like to go out and meet people and and talk and then I was day in and day out in some dirty jogging bottoms trying my <laughs> hardest to yeah. create art that you know wasn't good enough and I thought every painting has to be a masterpiece and it, I think the first two years were a real struggle for me <laughs> yeah 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 and lockdown it it, was, a, was a problem too from for people um I'm both i can be extrovert and i can be introvert it has to do with who i am but um yeah for me the lockdown as such wasn't that horrible being on my own i'm used to be on my own but i love to talk with people and then i have to retreat again to because highly sensitive people they get all that energy and then i need to block myself off from that energy mm -hmm. but i can fully understand that when you had a business, brick and mortar, boutique, um, talk with people in fashion, etc. You are constantly with people and engaging with people and suddenly you're on your own. Yeah. That is yeah. that is hard. I think the worst thing was, you know, 
I used to dress up and put on makeup and put on my heels and go to meetings and have meetings with <laughs> clients. And and now it's been like, I haven't washed my hair in two weeks. <laughs> and I haven't got out of these dirty clothes and I can't remember how long. So, yeah. 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 So that was uh, kind of tough, I think. <laughs> it is. But you conquered the world. With the Urban oh. Queen and oh, where you. your crown campaign. And I've read a little bit about it, but can you tell us a bit about that story? I found that such a brilliant, uh, um, how you call it, uh, label kind of thing. Wear your crown. It's not even, do you want to wear your crown? No, wear your crown. That's yeah. so powerful. It's so, you don't ask, you just tell them to do it. So how, well, tell us a bit yes, about that. That, that's that's what it is that you know you have to to show people what the possibilities are. Uh, so this this campaign um, was launched actually last year in uh, on, on the eighth of March, International Women's Day. <laughs> we <laughs> launched it in um, in uh, Washington D.C. at Zena Hotel, which is a fantastic hotel created with art for women and by women it's just mm. this beautiful arty hotel but it's all about women empowerment so it was a perfect location so uh to backtrack um i met a wonderful lady in new york who uh, we became great friends and and we worked together and she helped me with with uh, with a campaign um and uh, she came up with the slogan, wear your crown. So it's all her credit, Angie Xedias. <laughs> and um, uh, we created this campaign where we connected with women leaders from every continent. So we had, uh, and we approached them, and we had uh, from Australia, Casey Donovan, who's a renowned singer and actress from Britain, uh, Donna Ashworth, who, who is a poet, and she writes about women empowerment. Uh, from Brazil, we have um, 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 a wonderful uh, businesswoman who has a, a beauty business, uh, Natalia Martins, and she's Natalia Beauty. Um, from uh, uh, the States, um, we just have wonderful women from all over the world. I'll, I'll tell you all about them. So you put them in the show notes. I think that would be that would be great. Yeah. Um, and we connected with all of them. And I created a, a painting for each one of them based on my conversations with them and what they wanted to uh, to do and to represent. And each one of them. Um, uh represented a charity they chose a charity and the charity had to be a woman um a, a charity for women and through the campaign we raised money in order to help other women uh in need uh so you know it's a great idea and it was a great campaign and 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 it was global and we asked people to wear their crown and share the campaign and and uh, you know tell your sisters come on girl put your crown on and help somebody and yeah and um uh, i think it's something that i still need to carry on i'm still in the phase of how i'm going forward with it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a, I love it. It's such a beautiful thing. And I love this whole idea. And I saw you from going from Urban Queen, that was in 2020, when it really took off and, and uh, all the response you got into wear your crown. I had like, wow, she's really nailing it. And she really encourages so many people, women around the world. And it's so necessary, especially now especially now and um i love your title by the way the unbreakable spirit of women <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah that was the latest blog i wrote because yeah. it's march is women's history month yeah so um you know march is probably the most important month as far as my art is concerned this is what my art is all about it's about where we've been and where are we going it's about celebrating the women who came before us and uh you know who opened the doors for us and it's about 
transforming this movement into what it needs to be today. And um, uh, I loved the fact that um, I was listening to Marianne Williamson, who um, is running for presidents in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, and she was saying, you know, we need to run the country like a family, not like a business. Mm -hmm. I mean, only a woman can say that, right? Yeah. Yeah. How do you run a family? You run a family so everybody's happy, so everybody's healthy, so everybody's taken care of, so everybody's, you know, nurtured. That's how you run a family. How do you run a business so the shareholders have maximum prof profits? <laughs> well, so that's the difference. <laughs> yeah, there can this be. Is why we need women leaders, you know. Don't you think that a business also can be run like a family? Because I've oh, heard, yes, he I've heard oh yes, he can. But I think this is why it needs, it needs the help of women to grow like a family. Because yeah. this is what this is what women are good at. Women are yeah. good at running their families. So yes. let's women are good at a lot of things. Like family. Let's run the country like a family. Let's let it all be. I was watching last night uh, a movie, and it was an Italian movie, and it was all about you know having no more time this person who just realizes that the life just he works 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 and you know he doesn't get to see his wife and his daughter and he realizes what's more important in life is it all this work and accumulation or is it that i'm missing out he basically missed out at 10 years of his life yeah so it's about this balance isn't it it's yeah. about creating the balance and 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 enjoying life as we have it right now uh, exactly um, but that is that is so great that what what we can do as artists about this movement because i have the same spirit behind my work um but ever since the enlightenment women have been put away as weak but look what women do they run their families they carry their children, they bring them to this world, they feed them, they often also have a job, often are alone. And we do so much, so much. So, so this, is, this is because society considers some things being more important than others. And for some reason, I don't know where and why society decided that uh, you know, all the things that you mentioned are not as important. Yeah. The same way as you go to school and they say, you know, study maths is more important than studying art. Why? Mm. Why did somebody mm. decide that? Because imagine yeah. a world without art. I mean, it would be a terrible world. I don't think anybody would want to live in a world without art. And I'm not oh. only talking about, you know, painting. I'm talking about all art. All Fitness. art. Music. Yeah. Think yeah. about music. Exactly. Yeah. So no, don't put it as a as a second hand thing. It's not less important than maths. Uh, it's just as important. So I guess you know this is the message that I'm trying to say. It's just as important. So, um, so let's create the balance that we need. Yeah. Uh, you know, we need men to be who they are. I love men. I think they're great, and many of them are doing a great job. And women are great too. So the, the balance is about us doing what, what we are great at and, and understanding that each of the parts that we are playing is just as important as the exactly. other. Exactly. The balance. The balance, great. yes. Do you have, well, you gave a lot of tips. I think listening to you <laughs> is one big tip for artists oh. <laughs> but do you have any tips for artists who are entering the world to become an art entrepreneur uh who are entering right now yes yeah. i would say uh, obviously understand that you are running a business that you're not just creating art if you want you know your art to be out there i think young people have it quite easy with technology and with what's happening right now so they would find it probably easier uh but yeah i would say even going to business school would help you or you know do do some sort of 
marketing courses and and things like that um and the other thing i would say just paint what your heart desires because if you don't if you transform it into a product that needs to be sold then then i don't think you can I, I don't think that's a path. I don't think no. you're creating art. You're just creating a product. So yeah. first of all is say what you want to say, you know, with your art, have your message, message. and then learn how to distribute this message, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I haven't exactly. figured it out 100% either. You know, I'm still learning. I'm constantly learning. So. <laughs> but that's what we do. Me too. I'm Absolutely. constantly learning. That's why I, ha I love these conversations. I always learn from people I talk with. Um, and yeah, but it's it's amazing. I mean, I think you're an amazing artist and you bring brilliant work into the world. You do a lot for women empowerment. And also as an entrepreneur, you are an entrepreneur and you can thoroughly say that, even though we have to grow, we have to learn till we pass over. That's life really? too, because we have constantly changes in everything. And if you don't learn that, yeah, well, you need to. But anyway. As an entrepreneur, what I can say is, you know, because I have run businesses before, you know, when you run a fashion business or an interior design business or any other business, you can say, okay, I'm going to run it for 10 years and then I can step back and have the rewards for it. I haven't figured out how to do that with art. You know, with art, you have to constantly have your foot on the pedal because you have to constantly create and yep. and show your art. It's not like, oh, I can put a director, I can put another artist to paint my paintings <laughs> and the salesperson to sell them. And oh, all. well, and that I'll happens too, by the way. But, so, yeah. yeah, so it's even it's even a bit tougher than than the usual entrepreneurship uh, yeah. kind of way. Yeah, I think you're but right. But hard. at the same time, it's what we love to do. Exactly. I wouldn't want it any other way. Exactly, yeah. So you have a choice, either choose that or go into the rat race. Up until now, the artists who we still know turned out very old because they lost they they really passed over in the harness with the brush stroke in their hands or the sizzle when they were so so, so perhaps that, the, that perhaps that's the the advice that we can give somebody who's just starting out you know if you're not 100 percent passionate don't bother yeah. Because yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, it's a tough industry. Yeah. It's a tough place to be in. And it's only your passion that's going to carry you through, I think. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. That's a beautiful <laughs> Thank you. end note. Yeah. So, okay. Where can people find you? And everything comes in the show notes. Your Instagram, oh. your Facebook, your uh, website. So there, RamonaPintea.com. That's my website. And from my website, I have the links to Facebook and Instagram and everything else. Great. Yeah. I put it in the show notes. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank and you. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Karen. You're very welcome. It's very been lovely welcome. talking I, to you. It was lovely having you here. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye.